GoForTheTwo.com in with the Week 9 predictions. Let's jump right into it. Big 12 battle, Oklahoma State, West Virginia. Oklahoma State's won the last two over the Mountaineers by 14 points per game. They picked this victory up in Stillwater last year by a score of 37-20. You look at Oklahoma State last week, they survived in Austin, winning against Texas 13-10, intercepted in the overtime quarter against Sam Ellinger and the Texas offense to survive on the road. It is back-to-back road games for Oklahoma State. You look at West Virginia, they survived the scare on the road last week in Waco. Winning that ball game over Baylor 38 to 36. They held on a two-point conversion to seal that victory. They now come back home to face a prolific Oklahoma State offense that's averaging 191 rushing yards on the ground, passing for 392 through the air with Mason Rudolph. That's completing 66% of his passes, 2,650 yards, 19 touchdowns, four interceptions. I think that's the difference for Oklahoma State. Going up against the West Virginia defense that's giving up 262 passing yards per game this year. They gave up 370 to Baylor last week on the road and now have to face the wide receivers of Oklahoma State led by James Washington, J.J. McCleskey, Aitman, and Stoner that have combined for 121 receptions, 2,219 receiving yards, and 17 receiving touchdowns. I think they could stretch West Virginia's defense vertically, and I think they'll, that will allow for big plays in the offense. More importantly, you look at West Virginia's offense as a whole over the last three weeks now. They haven't been able to run the football consistently. They're averaging 101.3 rushing yards over the last three weeks. I think Oklahoma State will be able to put Will Greer into third down and long situations, make that offense one-dimensional, and I do feel that Oklahoma State does get a convincing road win in Morgantown this coming Saturday. Anywhere from 14 to 17 points. Look for Oklahoma State to dominate this matchup. Let's stay in the Big 12. Texas Tech on the road in Norman to face Oklahoma. You look at Texas Tech last week, a disappointing home loss. I picked Iowa State. They didn't disappoint. They were able to pass for 192 yards through the air, but more importantly, they pounded the rock for 208 yards on the ground with their running back, David Montgomery. Now you look at Texas Tech. Since 2012, Oklahoma is 5-0 over the Red Raiders and have won those games by 16.8 points per game. Oklahoma survived the scare last week on the road in Manhattan. They won that matchup 42-35. to This is an Oklahoma offense that's averaging 199 rushing yards per game, and they're passing for 382 through the air. You look at their quarterback, Baker Mayfield. He's completing 73% of his passes. 2,347 yards, 19 touchdowns, two interceptions. You look at Oklahoma, and last week, Baker Mayfield, he passed for 410 yards through the air. He added a rushing touchdown as well. This is an Oklahoma defense that's playing much better in terms of run support. They're only giving up 146 rushing yards on the ground. And you look at Texas Tech's secondary this year. They're giving up 291 passing yards per game to opposing offenses. You have a young head coach in Lincoln Riley that did lose his last home game there in Norman to Iowa State. Do not expect Oklahoma to take Texas Tech lightly in this ballgame. And you look at Cliff Kingsbury and Texas Tech as a whole over the last three years in the Big 12. This is a team that is 10 and 21 in Big 12 play. They've failed to be over 500. They entered this game 1 and 3 overall. I like the speed of Oklahoma. I think they start fast, put the pressure on Nick Shimanek to match them score for score. And I do feel that Oklahoma does pick up a convincing 24-point or more victory at home in Norman Saturday night under the lights. Another intriguing battle is Lamar Jackson and Louisville. On the road against Wake Forest, this is another team in Louisville that has back-to-back road games. They beat uh, Florida State last week. Lamar Jackson stepped up. He passed for 156 yards through the air and a touchdown. He added 178 rushing yards on the ground and a touchdown. On the year, Lamar Jackson has completed 60% of his passes, 2,478 passing yards, 17 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. He's also had 868 rushing yards and 11 rushing touchdowns. 
Over the last three meetings, Louisville is 3-0 over Wake Forest and have won those games by 14.3 points per game. They won this matchup last year in Papa John's 44-12. Keep in mind, this was uh, the Wakey Leaks game where Tommy Elrod, the former Wake Forest broadcaster, was leaking uh, game plan information to teams such as Bobby Petrino. They struggled for three quarters last year in that matchup and poured it on in the fourth quarter. But I think this is a focused Louisville team now. They got the victory against Florida State. They stepped up. They played very well. They have 16 total sacks on the year. And more importantly, this is a Wake Forest team that is giving up 182 rushing yards per game and more importantly allowed 427 rushing yards in the loss last week to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. They now come back home and have to face a speed offense led by one of the best players in the nation, Lamar Jackson. I think that's the difference. I think Louisville is able to really put pressure on Wake Forest's defense on the perimeter. You look at Louisville, the way you beat the Cardinals is over the top, and I don't think Wake Forest has the type of offense with Hinton or Wolford to stretch that Louisville defense vertically. I think Louisville wins this ball game by 28 points or more. I think they get a convincing road win this coming Saturday in Winston-Salem. Another intriguing battle is a Big Ten battle. It's Michigan State, Northwestern. Michigan State, I want to say a methodical win over Indiana. They scored with a minute and a half left to win that ball game, 17 to 9. They were held under 100 yards against that Indiana front seven. You look at this game last year, Northwestern won 54 to 40. It was the most points put up on Michigan State at home ever. Clayton Thorson. Jumped out in that ball game early and really stretched that Michigan defense vertically. I think they match up very well from a speed advantage. This is an offense in Northwestern that's passing for over 250 yards per game. Clayton Thorson's completing 60% of his passes, 1,688 yards, eight touchdowns, nine interceptions. They've gotten the running game going in recent weeks. They put up 238 rushing yards against Maryland. They backed that up last week with a solid 147-yard performance against Iowa. I picked them against Iowa. They stepped up not only offensively, but defensively as well. They held Iowa in check. 89 rushing yards on the ground over the last five weeks now. Northwestern has been very solid in run support against Bowling Green, Wisconsin, Penn State, Maryland, and Iowa. They're holding opposing offenses to 94.2 rushing yards per game. I think that matches up very well against Michigan State's offense. And more importantly, Northwestern over the last couple of weeks on third down conversions Back-to-back games is holding opposing offenses to 29% of third-down conversions. You look at Michigan State over the last four weeks, they've only converted 17 of 57 third-down conversions, which is right in the area of 29%. I think Northwestern playing at home matches up very well against Michigan State. They're playing with confidence. And more importantly, Michigan State does face Penn State on their next game. Are they possibly looking ahead for that ball game? I think Northwestern is a confident team. And I think they pick up the victory this coming weekend. Not going to be easy. But I do feel they pick up a 27-23 victory over Michigan State this coming weekend. I think it'll be a tough ball game, just like Iowa, but I do feel they pick up the victory. I think they cover this number as well at home as a dog over Michigan State this coming weekend. Another intriguing battle, it's a rivalry game. It's Kansas State on the road in Lawrence to face Kansas. Kansas State has won eight straight over the Jayhawks by 30.2 points per game. You're talking about Kansas State, that has lost three straight. You're talking about Kansas that has lost three straight as well. When you look at this game last year, Kansas State picked up the victory 34-19. to They won this ball game by 15 points. They struggled at home in Manhattan against the Jayhawks. You're talking about a Kansas State team over three weeks now against Texas, Oklahoma, and TCU that has allowed 362 passing yards to opposing offenses. You look at Kansas, they've struggled from an offensive perspective. They're only averaging 21 points per game, but they are passing for over 200 yards through the air. Their quarterback, Peyton Bender, has completed 54% of his passes, eight touchdowns, nine interceptions. 
You're talking about a Kansas team, a Kansas team that was dominated in recent weeks, back-to-back -back shutouts by Iowa State and TCU, three straight games now against Texas Tech, TCU, and Iowa State. They've been outscored by a margin of 115 to 13, or 44.6 points per game. This is their Super Bowl. If they're going to step up any week, it's going to be against Kansas State. They lost this ball game by 15 points last year. I think they get the outright victory over Kansas State this coming re weekend. I'm not sold on Kansas State. I wasn't sold on them at the start of the year. I picked them at 5-7. and seven. I said it last year. Kansas State won nine games in 2016 against opponents with a combined overall record. Eight FBS opponents with a combined overall record of 39-60 and 60 or 390, 393 winning percentage. I think when you look at this matchup as well, Kansas State is not generating a pass rush. They have 11 total sacks through seven games. If Peyton Bender has time, I think he could pick apart that Kansas State secondary that, in my opinion, could be worn out in, for three straight games. I'm calling for the outright victory. I think it's a low-scoring game. Kansas does get the victory 24-20 to over Kansas State this coming weekend. Alex Benton, the Kansas State quarterback, is a better runner than he is a passer. I think that's the difference as well. Look for Peyton, Peyton Bender and the crew to get the upset win at home in Lawrence this coming weekend over Bill Snyder. And then Bill Snyder and the crew will move on to 3-5 and five overall in 2017. Another intriguing battle. I brought up Iowa State last week. They didn't disappoint the 31 to 13 victory over Texas Tech last week. They rushed for 208 yards on the ground with David Montgomery. They passed for 192 yards through the air. They're ranked for the first time since 2005 and face a top five opponent in TCU. TCU since 2012 has dominated this series. They're 4-0 over the Cyclones by 25.2 points per game. And they won this matchup in Fort Worth last year, 41-20. But I like Iowa State. I like the way they're playing right now. Kyle Kemp, their quarterback, is completing 69% of his passes, seven touchdowns, one interception. He has two big play wide receivers in Hakeem Butler and Alan Lazard that have combined for 56 receptions eight receiving touchdowns. More importantly, this place in Ames this coming weekend is going to be a hornet's nest for TCU. You look at Iowa State last year, they paid very well against the better teams in the Big 12. They lost four games to Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, and Baylor by a total of 25 points. This year, they've lost two games to Texas and Iowa by a combined total points of 13 total points. They lost by three to Iowa in overtime and 10 to Texas. If you're going to get the upset, you need to be a, a solid defense and run support. Iowa State's only given up 120 rushing yards on the ground to opposing offenses, and you need to force turnovers. Entering this ballgame, Iowa State is plus eight in turnover margin. I know Kenny Hill is... Been consistent this year. He's completing over 70% of his passes with 15 touchdowns, three interceptions. But keep in mind, TCU does face Texas in their next game. Are they possibly looking ahead? I know they're undefeated. I know it's not a possibility, so they say. But these are college kids. I'm calling for the upset. I love the way Matt Campbell is coaching this team. They're 5-2 and two overall. They have an opportunity to become bowl eligible and, more importantly, knock off a top five team they knocked off oklahoma on the road they're going to be a confident team facing tcu offensive line for iowa state's playing very well as well seven games only nine sacks allowed i think that's the difference and i like the way matt campbell's utilized david montgomery in the short to intermediate passing game i'm calling for the upset 27 23 iowa state over tcu and kenny hill this coming weekend Another underdog that's on the road is NC State. They've had an extra week to prepare. They knocked off Notre Dame last year, 10-3 in Raleigh. I know it was a monsoon. What can you say about Brandon Wimbush and Notre Dame? I was dead wrong on them. I picked against them with USC and Sam Darnold. USC looked flat. They didn't look into the game, but credit Notre Dame for dominating that matchup. The defense stepped up. 
but they're going to be facing a different animal in NC State. This is an NC State defense that's only given up 92 rushing yards to opposing offenses. Bradley Chubb and this defensive front is very solid in run support and can run sideline to sideline. This is a Notre Dame offense that's averaging 317 rushing yards on the ground. They're averaging right around 153 passing yards per game. Brandon Winbush still is only completing 51% of his passes. But this is an NC State offense that's very multidimensional. They have a senior quarterback in Ryan Finley that's completing 69% of his passes. 1,968 passing yards, 11 touchdowns, no interceptions. They have big play wide receivers in Stephen Lewis and Jalen Samuels. This is a veteran wide receiver core that can put pressure on Notre Dame's defense that's given up 235 passing yards to opposing offenses. This is an opportunistic defense in NC State as well. They're plus eight in turnover margin. And I don't think they'll fear uh, Notre Dame in this ballgame. They won this matchup 10-3 to last year at home in Raleigh. They now go on the road with an extra week of preparation I think it matters. I think NC State does knock off Notre Dame this weekend. I know I picked against Notre Dame last week. I'm picking against them again this week. I think they. this is a tough matchup for the Fighting Irish. I like the front seven of Bradley Chubb. The way you have to beat NC State is over the top. And Brandon Wimbush in this offense haven't shown the consistent capability to do that. It's all been with his legs. He's a dominant runner. I think it stops this coming weekend. I'm calling for the upset. 31-24, to NC State gets the victory over Notre Dame in South Bend. Stay with me all season long. Follow the radio show every Saturday morning, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Fantasy Sports Radio Network, FNTSY.com backslash radio, or tune in to Fantasy Sports Television. Optimum or Cable Vision, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific. College football today, or you can go to Channel 262 on Dish Network. College football is great. I just love talking about it. Have a great weekend, everyone.